Across countless planets in the 40k universe, trillions upon trillions of soldiers invest all their hope for survival on the weapons they take with them on the battlefield, from primitive orcs luggas to the physics-bending gauze flares of the Necron warriors. Each standard issue firearm is a crucial component of the survival of the rank-and-file soldiers of the major factions of the 40k universe. Let's begin with arguably the most numerous and most disliked firearm carried by the infantry soldiers of the 40k universe, the Imperial Guard Lasgun. The Lasgun is a laser weapon. It is engineered by mankind to be carried by the foot soldiers of the Imperium's Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard. It forms the very backbone of the Imperium's fighting force, and the guardsmen that confidently march into battle wielding one of these deadly laser weapons trust its payload to strike down the Emperor of Mankind's enemies. The LAS gun, or sometimes referred to as a LAS rifle, falls into a family of direct energy weapons. They produce beams of high intensity amplified light to produce heat damage on a target. The amount of power that that heat can deliver ranges from the earth shattering neutron laser projector that can take down a titan shield and then pierce its armor, to the simple but deadly LAS pistol which we'll talk about later in the video. When it comes to the LAS gun, this weapon emits a beam of light that causes the immediate surface area of a target to vaporize in a small explosion that is so intense it is capable of cleanly severing unarmored human limbs and even piercing power armor with a well-timed shot. This damage output places it above the more conventional projectile weapons used in modern day firearms, also referred to as relics by the gangs of the Underhive and other Imperial agents that still use these primitive designs. A shot from an ancient pattern weapon, so a standard weapon might be able to pierce through basic armor and puncture organs, but a LAS rifle can vaporize straight through a similarly armored foe. Aside from damaging more surface area of a target than the conventional gun, the LAS rifle has the added advantage of not needing solid ammunition. The weapon only requires a power pack containing rechargeable power cells. If a regiment finds itself cut off from supply lines, the power cell can be charged in a number of different ways, including by sunlight or even by being placed near a campfire for just a few minutes. The power pack is located underneath the gun and in front of the trigger guard, making it easy to be swapped out when depleted. The intensity of the laser fired by the LAS gun can also be calibrated to the point that if it's set to the maximum power, it has been known to penetrate the weak spots of a Chaos Space Marine's power armor. However, let me be clear, these LAS rifles are not as powerful when compared to the Imperium's other weapons like the Bolter or the Plasma Gun. What a LAS rifle can do is produce mass volley fire, meaning that a hail of LAS shots coming from hundreds of LAS gun barrels can easily halt the charge of a lightly armored opponent like Orc Boys or Chaos Cultists. And this strategy really highlights the battlefield intent of the LAS rifle. It was created so that every single Imperial Guardsman would have the same or at least a similar issued firearm. With that in mind, the LAS rifle design is capable of being mass produced, it's reliable, easy to maintain, and all costing the Imperium very little resources. LAS guns are designed to have iron sights mounted on top of the weapon, but these are not standard issue. They also have a rate of fire at about 220 shots per minute. The standard weight of this weapon, without any modifications, is only 5 pounds. And the LAS rifle can also be outfitted with a bayonet or used as a club at close quarters without risk of damaging the weapon. The key thing here is that the LAS rifle is a rugged weapon that is meant to be used on any battlefield environment. Although mocked by so many within the Imperium, some even calling it a flashlight, the standard issue LAS gun is a solid and reliable weapon for a human. Let's move away from Imperial technology and take a look at a standard issue Xeno firearm that is far more elegant and makes the LAS gun appear like a crude primitive weapon, the Eldari Shuriken Catapult. Unlike the base material used by human engineers, the Eldar utilize a unique building component called Wraithbone. Almost everything in the Eldar society is built on Wraithbone, from the planet-sized craft worlds to the standard issue firearms of these warriors. Wraithbone is a psychoplastic material that is formed by crystallizing psychic energy and then turning it into a solid structure. From there it is shaped and grown by the Eldar Bone Singers through the application of their psychic powers. The material is resilient to damage, especially warp powers, and capable of limited self-repair. Everything made out of Wraithbone acts as a psychic conduit, which allows the psychically powerful Eldari to form a unique bond with these weapons. The construction of the shuriken catapults begin with a bone singer who has previously walked the path of the warrior. 
armed with the knowledge that comes with defending their own craft world, these bone singers craft a close range firearm that is capable of laying down a withering stream of fire over short distances. The design of the shuriken catapult will almost always share a similar aesthetic, with a long, tapered barrel leading to an elegant stock that houses a plastic crystal, gravitic accelerator, and a magnetic repulsor. However, this design is only a template, and if the bone singer chooses, he can create a weapon that resembles anything he wants. Although rare, these exotic designs have been collected from the corpses of Eldar Guardians. Besides being made up of a psychically powerful material that is perfectly and gracefully shaped to facilitate the destruction of their enemies, the shuriken catapult's deadliness is credited to the ammunition the firearm uses. Shuriken projectiles are razor-sharp, monomolecular edge discs cut from a plastic crystal. They can take on many shapes from circular, triangular, or even star-shaped discs, and this is dictated by the artistic desire of the bone singer who constructs the weapon. The disc travels through the battlefield at a tremendous speed and can slice straight through thick metal or even plasteel. When the trigger is pulled, a molecule-thick disc is shaved from the solid core of the plastic crystal inside and then propelled by a gravitic accelerator and ejected from the barrel at a tremendous velocity. The ammunition core is kept leveled with the barrel by a magnetic repulsor, allowing the next round to be detached and fired with great speed and accuracy. In this way, the shuriken catapult is capable of releasing a burst of 100 shurikens in under 2 seconds. Each core is large enough to form a thousand rounds, allowing 10 such storms of fire before needing to be replaced. When a whole squad of guardians fires their shuriken catapults, the barrage of discs is so intense it could reduce entire mobs of infantry into a collection of blood and guts in a matter of minutes. This is why the Eldar like to call these weapons Tulean. In the Eldar tongue, it is translated to a storm of blades. And when it comes time to reload, the ammunition core is easily ejected with a thought from the user. Because the Eldar warrior is psychically linked to their firearm, firing the weapon is as simple as willing it to do so, as the wraithbone properties of the shuriken catapult are channeling the wielder's psychic might. In case of a psychic disruption, each weapon is also equipped with a physical trigger mechanism and a release button for the ammunition. This has proven vital in many conflicts, especially against nulls or pariahs. But even when countered, the shuriken catapult acts as an extension of the warrior who carries it into battle. It is as if every movement pairs perfectly with each volley of fire as the Eldar's alien-like elegance and poise is translated into accuracy and dexterity of the weapon. This comfort with the shuriken catapult is hardwired into every single craft world citizen, as they are all trained to use this core firearm to defend their home. It is one of the most lethal yet sophisticated Xeno firearms in the entire galaxy. Now when it comes to the most truly alien firearm, we have to move on to a faction that shouldn't even exist in the Milky Way galaxy, the Tyranids. Although each high fleet creates its own unique biomorphs, the design that has become the pinnacle of efficient destruction with the least amount of energy expanded is the Flesh Borer. This weapon can't even be called a firearm. It's completely organic, but it is maneuvered by the Tyranid Termagant as a normal infantry soldier would maneuver his ranged weapon. The entire biomechanical device is attached to the front arms of the Termagant, and various organs connect the weapon to the main body of the creature. It's really just a rotting, cone-shaped appendage that hangs off the Tyranid and becomes a nest for the sharp fang Borer Beetles, another smaller Tyranid creature. The beetles are allowed to mature inside the Termagant's bioweapon, but are then kept sedated through hormones released by the warrior, until the Termagant sends an intense electrochemical impulse that not only awakens the beetles from their slumber, but causes them to lay eggs inside the nest, before an additional neural pulse is sent into the firing spinster that directs the small beetles at a target. The beetles use its powerful legs to launch themselves at a tremendous speed, and when they strike their target, they use all of their energy to burrow into the enemy's armor and flesh. All of this takes less than a split second, and to help it get through the tough exterior of most warriors, the borer beetle secretes a potent digestive enzyme that eats away at almost anything. The accuracy and deadliness of this bioweapon has progressed to match the agility and cunning of the tyranid creatures that the hive mind chooses to pair it with. Now it's important to remember that this is not like any other weapon on the list. If the Flesh Borer is damaged, the Termagant will have to rely completely on its close combat mutations to kill its enemy. Now moving back to the more conventional style weapons is the unique yet familiar firearm of the Skatari legions of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Galvanic Rifle. 
This peculiar weapon doesn't seem to belong in the technologically advanced battlefields of the 40k universe, but its appearance hides a highly complex mechanical design that is purposefully modeled after the ancient hunting flintlock rifles of Mars's distant colonial past. The amount of care taken to produce a weapon like this is showcased in the galvanic rifle's ornate design which twists in calligraphy style patterns that lay atop a polished wooden frame. But its fragile appearance is only a facade. The rifle fires a specialized bullet that can travel far longer than most projectiles and is capable of piercing through space marine armor. To add insult to injury, when the bullet makes impact, it releases a small blast of electric force that causes any potential energy of the target to burn out. The design of this weapon is heavily guarded by the Forge Worlds that are given authorization to mass produce and distribute them amongst the Skatari legions and the other forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus. And while the majority of the firearms on this list follow very strict manufactured designs, there is one class of weapon that can't really say it respects any unified or cohesive pattern. This is because the greenskins that wield this weapon only care that it makes as much noise and produces as much destruction as possible. This is the Orc Shuda. We can think of a shooter as another name for firearm to the orcs. Every one of these loud weapons is handcrafted by some mech boy from whatever his Gretchen slaves could get their hands on. Like every other piece of orc technology, the shooter is a ramshackled weapon. It usually takes the form of an automatic ballistic gun that fires off an even wider array of projectiles, from large caliber bullets to explosive shells, sometimes even both. The gun doesn't always operate like it's supposed to either. It's not very accurate, and from time to time, the entire thing will blow up in the face of the orc who's using it. But to the greenskins, this risk doesn't really matter, because they're more interested in causing as much ruckus as possible. Give an orc mech a perfectly designed firearm like any of the ones we've mentioned so far, and the odd boy will remove every single mechanism that reduces the weapon's rate of fire and suppresses much of the noise it makes. And the crazy part is that this custom job that they say they perform on a standard firearm 100% improves the deadliness of the weapon. Now there are some orc boys that are still going to customize their shooter even after they purchase it from the mech, because you can never truly have enough DACA, but for the most part, orc warriors will toss their shooter aside if they can steal or take a louder and shootier shooter. Strangely enough, only orc boys can wield it without causing severe injury to themselves. We can go into details on all the different modifications that mechs have done to the shooter, but that's a topic for another video. All we need to remember is that the Shuda is a primitively constructed firearm that is as deadly to the enemy as it is an orc. Now let's go from a weapon that is randomly fashioned together to a firearm that has a very detailed design thanks to years of technological progress and innovation, the Tau Empire's Pulse Rifle. It is the Earthcast engineers who painstakingly developed this firearm to be mass issued to the Tau Firecast in order to cleanse the greenskin menace from their territory in the 38th millennium. Since then, few modifications have been made to this weapon. The standard issue pulse rifle is a very long weapon with a length many times its width and height. The bulk of the barrel is surrounded by coils of conductive material visible in some pattern along the top of the weapon which produce a solenoid. When current is passed through them, these coils generate an electromagnetic field oriented along the barrel. At the front of the gun are the weapon's two muzzles, just behind which is a circular apparatus that looks like a large bolt head that serves as a recoil stabilizer. To the rear of the barrel mechanism is the primary magazine, and behind that, the trigger assembly and stock. Within the stock is the secondary magazine or power cell, which is able to provide up to 36 shots before it needs to be replaced. A remote thermal sight adorns most models of the pulse rifle atop and slightly forward of the trigger assembly. The thermal sight, combined with the weapon's advanced stabilizers and recoil reduction, make the pulse rifle extremely accurate and deadly. To put it simply, the weapon works by electromagnetically accelerating a plasma shell down its barrel. In effect, it's just like a miniature mass accelerator. If you want to get more complex, when the fire warrior pulls the trigger, a ferromagnetic solid slug is chambered from the magazine and turned into a plasma by electromagnetic induction. It could stay in this state because it's relatively easy to alter the coil currents at frequencies sufficient enough to heat the coil to an extreme temperature while keeping it in the chamber. The solenoid is then charged fully, propelling the newly produced plasma out of the gun at extreme velocities while keeping it in a cohesive state. Though this electromagnetic field continues to keep the plasma together until impact, residual plasma is expelled from the barrel to produce the weapon's considerable muzzle flash. 
Maintenance of the field is also aided by a bolt-like apparatus which increases the field strength and therefore the range. The weight of the bolt also serves to dampen the recoil from firing. Without the electromagnetic field, the fired plasma would all dissipate at the barrel mouth, producing a weapon with a range of approximately 20 centimeters. The power required to generate this immense electromagnetic field comes from a secondary magazine which is effectively a very powerful and dense rechargeable battery in the weapon stock. It has changed less frequency than the primary power pack and can be recharged from the firer's suit or combat armor. Pulse rifle rounds do great damage on impact, mostly due to the extreme thermal energy of the plasma mass and the speed by which the projectile impacts. The electromagnetic field that holds the charge together flattens on impact slightly before breaking, which causes the resulting impact to spread over a wider area that would otherwise be possible. This helps ensure that armored targets are more heavily damaged. The speed at which the plasma projectile is launched is so extreme that in some cases it's even been known to light the air on fire. While these weapons are far more powerful than the firearms we've talked about so far, the weapon suffers from a low rate of fire. But then again, the fire warriors need a weapon that can cause as much damage to enemies that are almost always larger and stronger than the Tau. And it's incredible that a race so young like the Tau are able to create such a technologically advanced weapon. But to witness a true marvel of military power and efficiency, we have to look at a race that has existed in the universe for 60 million years, the Necrons. Everything about the Necron's technology stretches our understanding of the laws of physics. Even after examining and probing many of their devices, they seem to act in almost a magical sense, and yet the Necrons use no warp power. Such is the case for their warrior standard issue firearm, the Gauze Flare. This rifle-like weapon consists of a stock and a transparent tube containing an unknown viridian energy that is fired by the gun. This emerald lightning-like beam is what makes the weapon so powerful. Unlike the energy weapons we've discussed so far, the gauze flare doesn't deliver a cutting beam or a bolt of pure force. Instead, the beam pulls the target towards the gun at a subatomic level. This begins disassembling the object, reducing flesh, armor, and bone to almost nothing. It's supposedly extremely painful to be shot with a gauze flare. The victims die as much from the systemic shock of the assault as the damage caused by the beam. The Imperium of Man is confounded by the nature of the energy used by this weapon. Not only because this basic weaponry of the Necrons can cause great harm to even the most advanced vehicles deployed by the armed forces of the Imperium, but also because by all physical principles known to man, these weapons should overheat and malfunction as a result of the tremendous energy they unleash, outright destroying the warrior who is firing them. And yet somehow the Necron Gauze Flare is used by every single Necron warrior with no negative effect. And as more and more Necron Tomb Worlds are awakened, the sheer power and terror of this weapon is too much for most enemies to bear. It's actually funny that fear is a byproduct of this weapon's power, because there is another weapon on this list that was designed specifically to strike panic and dread into its target, the Dark Eldar Splinter Rifle. Somewhat similar in design to the Craftworld Eldar Shuriken Catapult, the Splinter Rifle fires a much more gruesome projectile. Instead of firing shaved thin discs at the target, the weapon uses a disintegration generator to break up a crystal into shards that are then accelerated through the barrel at supersonic speeds, rocketing towards the intended target and tearing it to shreds. The shot itself will probably only maim or severely injure the target, but within a few seconds the neural toxins of the shards will start to damage the victim's nervous system, causing unbearable pain. It's like getting shot with dozens of little poison-filled needles that will cause everlasting agony. The technology behind this weapon is the stuff of nightmares. The Dark Eldar even add monomolecular blades all around their weapon to assault their victim while they're writhing in agony on the ground. It's a weapon perfect for the sadistic Cabalite warriors. And now we have arrived to the most iconic firearm in the entire galaxy, a weapon made famous by humanity's angels of death, the Bolter. Every Astarte warrior is trained on the use of this fearsome weapon, and in the 10,000 years since it was issued to every Space Marine Legion, the Bolter has been modified and adapted to fit a wide variety of battlefield roles. All of these different variations have added to the popularity of the firearm, and it has found itself into many other Imperial Adepta, such as the Inquisition, Sisters of Battle, and even some members of the Imperial Guard. 
What makes the Bolter, or sometimes referred to as the Bolt Gun, so iconic is its tremendous power. It fires explosive kinetic rounds called bolts. In these bolts, a tiny amount of explosive is detonated when the round penetrates a target, causing immense damage and leaving little opportunity for survival. The weapon was created by the Adeptus Mechanicus based on ancient STC technology with the knowledge that it would be handled by superhuman warriors, which is why the proportions and the size of the Bolter are unfit for a standard soldier to carry comfortably. Even its recoil has the potential to rip a mortal man's arm straight out of his socket if he attempts to fire it. The maintenance of this weapon alone is a task that requires several chapter serfs or servitors when it's not the battle brother who is performing the cleansing ritual. The Bolter truly is a weapon built for a god. It operates just like any other ballistic weapon would, just in a much grander scale. The standard Godwin pattern, which is the most common pattern, fires a 75 caliber bolt. It has a built-in palm print sensor for genetic identification and an integral targeter system that links with the auto senses of the Battle Brothers helmet for superior accuracy. Sadly for the Imperium of Man, the Bolt Gun was issued to the Traitor Legions during the Great Crusade, therefore the Chaos Space Marines who now assault humanity do so with the same destructive weapon that the Loyalist Space Marines use. They may be older variants than the common Godwin pattern and the corruptive powers of the warp might have enhanced their bolters, but the Traitors also utilize this powerful and deadly weapon. And that's just a brief overview of all the main weapons for each race within the galaxy. I want to do a deep dive on the deadliest weapons of Warhammer 40k. So if you guys have any suggestions or can think of some really badass uh, weapons that you guys would like me to talk about, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, share with your friends on Facebook, Reddit, whatever social media you guys use. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with Online Syndicate signing out. <laughs>